Mr. President, before... Thank you very much, Senator Gordon. Before yes, sir, I Senator move Soto. to recognize uh, Senator Sabiri for interpolation, uh, I would just like to um, associate myself with the, um, with the intent and content of the uh, privileged speech of the gentleman. There is one Filipino trait that not too many people know about. We never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. May I now move that we recognize Senator Subiri, Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Senator President. Senator Subiri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, would the honorable, distinguished gentleman from Zambales yield to a few uh, friendly questions? Uh, Mr. President. Oh. The, the gentleman from Zambales may yield the floor if he wishes to do so. Willingly, Your Honor. Thank you very much. For my good friend and uh, fellow Red Cross, by the way, as the Red Cross uh, delegates are here, I just want to know, uh, you to all to know that uh, we have three, or rather four, officials of the Red Cross here. Senator Mick Subiri is the Vice Chairman of the Philippine Red Cross. Senator Gachalian is a board member of the Red Cross. And they all do as proud. And of course, Senator uh, Cynthia Villar <laughs> is a stalwart pillar of the Las Piñas Red Cross chapter. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, I completely agree with the views of the distinguished gentleman from Sambales that Subic is one of the crown jewels of our infrastructure development program for Central Luzon. As a matter of fact, in the previous Senate, uh, the previous uh, 14th Congress, where I had the, distinguished, uh, the distinct honor of being with him, we were pushing for the uh, Subic Clark. Three to one. Three to one. Subic Clark Naia Corridor to develop that particular area. But as you can see, Mr. President, history has shown that Subic grew because of visionary leadership. Leadership, by example, leadership of passion and of uh, vision. A man who had plans, a man who had not only ha plans but laid out these plans, Mr. President, Mr. President, without lifting his chair. He's here now in this August chamber as one of the members of the Senate. I want to ask him, because as, as you can see in the, in the speech when he had left Subic, it was on a downhill trend from there. How important is leadership to the post of these particular um, GOCCs, because it's obvious, Mr. President, if you put somebody there, they say if you uh, get peanuts, you or you buy peanuts, you get uh, monkeys. They say. So, Mr. President, I would just like to ask the good gentleman how important leadership is for these GOCCs for it to be able to develop. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to answer. The gentleman from Bukid Nun. Vision is important because it's better to know where you're going and not know how than to know how you're going and not know where. Mr. President, the problem with our country and the solution must be is that we stop appointing people who just want the title. It is just like us. The Senate President right now on the podium, on the chair, and our current Senate President are both lawyers and I'm a lawyer. There are several of us here. I used to say we have 49,000 lawyers, probably more today. Everybody wants to be called attorney, but we have no justice. Same thing. People want to be chairman of Subic because it is nice. Chairman, sikat, meron kang hawak na tao. Pagkakataon. At kung gagamitin niya yung gano'n, Eh, talaga walang mangyayari. Kung walang vision, walang driving force. Kung walang integrity, hindi ka susundin. Tatanda ako, sinabi ko, pag nakita niyo ako nagnakaw ng isang pako dito, nakawin niya na ang buong subik. Wala pong nagnakaw ng mga kapanahon na yan. May nag-attempt pumutol ng kahoy, tao mismo ang nagsusumbong pagka pinuputol po yung kahoy. So people have to own the vision. People have to have or shared division, as I used to say, shared vision, shared values, 
shared sacrifices, shared triumphs. And that is what we really have to try and get our people to get up and go. Uh, with the permission of Senator Sobiri, <coughs> uh, I'd like to know from the gentleman from Olongapo, who now chairs the SBOA? Mr. President, uh, it's a gentleman by the name of Bob Garcia. And by the no, way, he's, uh, yeah, he's an, his term is, has expired. That's is right. there a new, new one? Uh, there are many pretenders. Uh, there's, uh, and di pa ako lumalabas yung appointment, eh, sinasabi ng chairman na, wala pa akong appointment. In fact, there was a brewer, it was reported to me, apparently, nagdala doon ng tao, and I don't want to say this because I, this is hearsay, eh, sabi siya lang appointed, dinanapan siya ng appointment, wala pa palang appointment. I so, read in the media a certain Efren Dino? I think it's Martin Dino. Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, Martin. Yes, Mr. D President. I don't think he has been appointed. Otherwise, uh, he would have gone in. But nagkaroon nga ako ng konting hindi pagkakaintindihan doon. Uh, Martin Dino. Idiin Nino, Mr. President. <laughs> yeah, you know him, uh, Mr. Gordon? Uh, Central Gordon, do you know this Dino? I know him as a member of uh, the Crusade Against Crime and Corruption. I have no questions about that. Uh, when you put somebody there, I suppose uh, the President would know better than to put somebody who cannot promote, who cannot uh, go out and uh, go to the whole capitals of the world, the economic capitals of the world, the business capitals of the world, to be able to say, come over, pasok ko kayo dito. There is the rule of law there. Magagawa mo natin lahat yan, and we will not be harassed. We will not be corrupted. We will not allow ourselves to be corrupted. I don't know. I wish uh, we could examine his credentials. Mm -hmm. But I, I would advise the president, and I'm not saying this. In fact, I was being asked, or recommend, recommend, recommend. Sabi ko, kung ang kukuha tayo dyan, sabi ko, kumuha kayo ng tigar yan o nag-volunteer. <coughs> Pero kung kukunin nyo, <coughs> You're taking a risk because baka mabaya eh, mangyari na naman yung nangyari and lalo tayo madidiin sa karimblan. Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. But far be it from my intention to try and try to influence the President on this matter, Mr. President. But precisely, Mr. President, um, Senator Gordon, the, as you mentioned earlier, the leadership qualities that is needed to be able to manage such huge crown jewels, and I'm not saying anything bad on the potential current or potential uh, chairpersons of the SBMA, that the, those names floating, I have nothing against them. As a matter of fact, the gentleman that was mentioned by Senator Gordon, uh, Mr. Martin Dino, is also a good friend of ours. <coughs> He's a nice man. We know him as a nice man. And not to put down uh, anyone, you know, not to bring down anyone or or cast aspersion on anyone. We just, well, I personally, Mr. President, would like to see a, more, a professional running Subic. You know, Subic is sort of like, and, and the good gentleman can correct me, Subic um, is an echo zone. It's one of the three, only uh, three or four echo three zones, ports, three, ports. three ports in our country. It could be marketed as Macau, Singapore, Hong Kong or Hong Kong. And what we need there is a combination of a manager, at the same time, a tourism expert who can actually uh, market this all over the world, as well as a marketing expert being able to gather businessmen into the, to relocate uh, their companies to the said facility. Was that, is that, would that be correct? No. That's correct, Mr. President, and I'd like to join you. He is not an enemy, he is a friend, but I think that uh, we have to examine whoever is going to be there to make sure that he has the qualities that you mentioned. Mr. President, an airfield does not an airport make. An active airport means you have a good airport manager. He must be able to attract the flights. You probably have to start again with charter flights. He has to fix up Subic to make sure it's attractive for tourists. He has to fix up the investment climate to make sure there's no corruption. He has to make sure that the uh, master plan is followed. Because if you do not do that, Mr. President, nobody's going to go in there. 
Kala natin, just because we have an airport and a seaport, swak na. Clark is also the same way, Mr. President. The speech today was meant for Subic and Clark, learning from the lessons of Flying Point and other missed opportunities. And therefore, it is important that at least as senators, we can really influence and try to support these magnets for investment properly run so that we could provide investment opportunities for everyone. Yes, Mr. President, I could clearly recall when I was uh, a younger gentleman in the mid-90s when uh, Senator Gordon was still SBMA chair uh, and, and head. All of us wanted to go to Subic. Subic was the hottest uh, uh, spot to be in in uh, Luzon as a tourist destination, as a shopping destination. I remember they used to have a lot of, uh, um, what, what do you call those, uh, when you go shopping, the uh, duty outlets, free. outlets, duty-free outlets. And even food, uh, when you wanted to eat a good, a great cheeseburger, uh, fast food, American fast food, we go to Subic, bowling, I remember they had a fantastic bowling uh, facility. Uh, Subic Bay Yacht Club was still brand new. It was really the in place to visit at that time, uh, Mr. President, bustling with so much activity. And it saddens me because I was there recently uh, to buy uh, a truck at the auction because they have an auction now. I think that's the only thing that really is going on for Subic in the newspapers is the uh, quarterly auction of trucks and buses and, and vehicles. And I was so sad to see, Mr. President, uh, the ghost of, of its past, of what it used to be in the past. It's, it's, it's really sad. And, and um, I never talk about it with my good chairman of the Red Cross and my good, my good chair, uh, Ninong, because uh, I know it, will, it makes him sad to hear these kinds of comments. And I'm hoping that with this new administration, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, that um, we want to achieve inclusive growth. The way to in achieve inclusive growth is to be able to make more centers of progress outside of Metro Manila. We are toiling in and out of this traffic four or five hours a day. Obviously, the carrying capacity of Metro Manila is too uh, heavy already for the, for the city or the carrying capacity of the city is too much already uh, for, for, for its population. And therefore, we have to look outside of Metro Manila, Mr. President. And in the 90s, that was the way to go. I knew many friends who bought houses there who said, I'm going to live here and put up business here. Now, when I talk to them, they said, well, you know, ninakawa na yung bahay namin, pinasukan na. Yung wala nang masado kami nakikitang plans and vision and development. So they moved back to Metro Manila. Um, would the gentleman agree with me on that point, that really what is needed is visionary leadership, a man who can market so big, a man who can put this all together, run it like a uh, tight ship, uh, and, and make sure that there's no smuggling. Because, Mr. President, one thing that is also very lucrative in these free ports is the issue of smuggling. Because if you are corrupt, and uh, I'm just saying, if you are corrupt and you have a corrupt mind, you get into Subic, that's where you get all sorts of shenanigans that could happen. Smuggling of sugar, smuggling of rice, smuggling of uh, meat products that could come out of the gates of the free port. That has been an issue many times over when the good gentleman was no longer in SBMA. I remember there were several investigations of that effect. Would the gentleman agree with me? That is correct, Mr. President. Uh, just as an added anecdote, you claimed, uh, you said that uh, you played in the bowling lanes. There's a story to that, Mr. President, and I'd like to share that with you. When the Americans left, they were very bitter. They took out the bowling lanes. Tinanggal po yung bowling lanes. I went up to Washington. I was dealing with the World Bank at that time. Pumunta ako sa State Department, nakiusap ako. Alam niyo sabi sa akin ng Amerikano, kala na niyo porque Amerikano ang tatay ko na mistiso or pangalaw ko Amerikano, maka Amerikano ako. I'll share this story with you, and you know I said, can you not leave the, uh, can you leave the bowling lanes? I said, yeah, you know, Mr. Mayor, Mayor pa ako doon eh. I said, well, kung nung araw nandiyan ang Amerikano, aba eh, apat na abogado kagad sa State Department, apat sa Defense Department ang pupunta dyan para tulungan kaya. Talagang nagingiting aso eh. At ang sabi niya, 
you're no longer the top 10 of the hit parade. You used to be top 6. Ang basa na nyo. Ngayon, wala na. So, Mr. President, sabi ko sa kanya, well, sabi ko ganun, eh, wala pala tayong mangyayari dito. Alis na ako. Sandi lang, sabi niya. You may want to meet some people like Steve Solarch, kaibigan mo yan. Sabi ko, wala na. Hindi ko na po kailangan yan. At, uh, di ba, sabi niyo, wala na kami sa top 10 of the hit parade. Eh, huwag ka naman magalit, sabi na, in English, of course. Hindi, sabi ko, tatayo na ako. You'll hear from me. Tapos sabi ko, paalis na ako sa pinto. Sabi ko, ah, meron nga pala ako kung kailangan makausap. Sino yan? Sabi ko, si Mr. Brunswick. Sino yung Brunswick? Wala kami senador o congressman na ganyan, or governor. Hindi mo kilala si Brunswick, Amerikano ka, kako. Yan ang nag-invento ng bowling lanes doon. <laughs> and sabi niya, and that my Mr. Mayor will be the last uh, hit. No, you'll hear from me. And I will prove to you. And that, we did make the most beautiful bowling lane in the country at that time. Umiilaw yung bowling lane. May kumuhang private sector investment dyan. Speaking about smuggling, Mr. President, nako, talagang pagka pinapasok mo, kaya sinabi ko, I'm glad you bit on the bait. Parang pinapasok ko yung sawa sa poultry. If you allow somebody who has no integrity, talagang lilingisin lahat ang mga manok dyan. And that is why we have to be very careful. We have to tarry a little. Now, Mr. President, can you imagine, if we go back to the slide, katatandaan ni Mick Subiri, the Senator Subiri, in 3, 2, 1. Subic, Clark, Manila, at dalawang seaport, tatlong airport yun. Subic and Manila. Dinagda nga ko na po yan ngayon. Apat na seaport, ang papayal ko, Subic, Mariveles, Seaport of Manila, and the Batangas Seaport. Because makailan lang, you heard Manny Pangilinan is going to come up with a shortcut from the NLEX to the SLEX. Tuloy-tuloy sa Batangas. So, lahat siya pag pinagsama nyo, madaling mag-akit ng hanap buhay. We can get business to come here. And that's why yung Calabar Zone, nakita nyo, ang bilis because may lupa. Pag may lupa, madali. Ganito ang, ganito ang lupa dyan. Sa atin sa Bulacan. Ito, ito, ito ang square meters. Kaya nga, pati nga ho yung Iglesia ni Cristo, tuwag-tuwa ako, <coughs> nung nagtayo sila ng Bukawi uh, Arena, Philippine Sports Arena. At kako, yan ang umpisa. <coughs> At mantakin nyo, Mr. President. Right away, Ayala came into Bulacan. Ayala went into Porak. They bought 4,000 hectares. Yan ang umpisa. Kaya kailangan, <coughs> suplihan natin ng mahusay na infrastruktura at pagmamaneho nitong lugar na ito. Hindi dahil kami tiga Central Luzon or tiga Northern Luzon. <coughs> Lalo na, meron po akong file bukas na gawin na yung railroad na mas madali imbis na Manila to Pampanga, eh wala po tayong right of way problems doon sa Subic to Clark. Pag natapos yun, nasimulaan, mas maikli, mas madaling magawa, baka sumunod na ibang railroad doon from Manila to Clark. And because of that, lalakas ang hanap buhay. That is why it is so important. Kita naman, no, hindi, hindi ako nagyayabang dito, hindi ako nagbasa sapagkat nasa puso ko po yung sinasabi ko at saka sa isip ko eh. Hindi ko po kailangan na isipin pa yan eh. Pero I am doing this because let us not miss this golden opportunity once again. And you can do this in, in Cebu. You can have two airports in Cebu. Siksika na yung traffic doon. Mr. President, in Negros Island, kailangan natin mga taong ganyan eh. Si Mayor Pijong. Uh, Kabangkalan. Kabangkalan. <coughs> Mayor Saiko. Mayor Saiko. He is doing his own. Can you imagine that, gentlemen and ladies? Gumagawa sa na sarili niyang runway. He got loud. He's doing the runway. And I have it in my mind, really, I'm sure Senator Dilo will support him. plano, you could have at another airport that will service Negros Oriental and, of course, Negros Occidental. And look at the plan of the Senate President. Di sa pinalalaki ko ang pinatataba ko ang puso ng Senate President, yung Iloilo Airport, lumakas ang Iloilo. Nasundan ng ginawa niya na mga highway na 10 lanes. Nasundan ng mga magandang ilo, ng magandang convention center. That is the way. You complement your infrastructure with investments. And that way, it will pave the way for jobs, for opportunity. And not just jobs, well-paying jobs. at sustainable, Mr. President. Kung walang airport, aalis yan. Kung walang seaport, aalis yan. Kaya makita ninyo, 
Naka po, ayaw ko, hindi ko pa bubuk natin po yung tourism. Umabagsak po tayo sa tourism ngayon dahil sa mga reputational damage na naganap dito nung mga karangan. Eh huwag na po tayo manisi. Let us fix the problem. Let us not fix the blame. Take that in that spirit, please. Because we're not here. Ano pa mangyayari? Ginawa na eh. eh. Ayusin na lang po natin. Katulad ng ginagawa ng mga nasabi ko mga tao, sila Pidio, sila Fra uh, Fractilon, marami po yan, <coughs> mga nagangarap na magawa lahat yung mga pangarap na makakapagpalakas ng ating bayan. Thank you. Yes, I agree with the good gentleman on the observation of uh, the development in Iloilo. That is why the good Senate President Pro Temp was awarded the Grand Cordon of the Order of the Rising Sun. I, I want to be sure I heard it right, baka si Yakuse, pero hindi naman Yakuse. <laughs> pero okay, okay. We should be happy that our, our colleague and has worked hard is respected by other countries. Yes. Well, that's it, Mr. President. Um, Majority Floor Leader, uh, I thank the good gentleman for bringing this issue up. I just, I just really hope and pray that the new administration can really choose wisely when it comes to the management and operation of the Subic SBMA as well as Clark. Because these are, as I, I always say this to everyone who asks me, these are the crown jewels of Central Luzon, or the development of Central Luzon, and the decongestion of Metro Manila. Mis Mismanage, Mr. President, uh, God save us. And, uh, and I think it would be such a wasted opportunity. You remember, Mr. President, that uh, we had Marivelles free port, free trade zone. Matagal na matay yan. Dinibati natin mahaba dito. Ang tagal nag-interpolate ni President Aquino. Uh, dito, natanda ako. Angel ako, nandito si President Aquino. Senator Aquino. Ang dami nag-interpolate. Lahat, halos. Senator, really. O ayaw niya ng una. Nung magawa na po yan ngayon, aba, ang dami ng mga nagtatrabaho doon. May coach bag doon, ginagawa. About 6,000 employees. Naglalabas na sila ng mga bahay doon sa labas. Tuwan-tuwa yung mga tigabataan. Kaya kung may manghusay na magmamaneho, marami tayong makakalap na hanap buhay. It's important, Mr. President. Thank you for the opportunity, Mr. President, to ask. Mr. President, before... Thank you very much, Senator Gordon. Yes, before uh, Senator I Soto. move to recognize uh, Senator Sabiri for interpolation, uh, I would just like to um, associate myself with the... Um, with the intent and content of the uh, privileged speech of the gentleman. There is one Filipino trait that not too many people know about. We never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. In the previous Senate, uh, the previous uh, 14th Congress, where I had the, distinguished, uh, the distinct honor of being with him, we were pushing for the uh, Subic Clark. 3 to 1. Three to one, Subi Clark Naia Corridor to develop that particular area. But as you can see, Mr. President, history has shown that Subi. May I now move that we recognize Senator Subiri, Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Senator President. Subiri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, with the honorable, distinguished gentleman from Zambales, yield to a few. Uh, friendly questions, uh, Mr. President. Oh, the, the gentleman from Zambales may yield the floor if he wishes to do so. Villar is a stalwart pillar of the Las Piñas Red Cross chapter. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, I completely agree with the views of the distinguished gentleman from Zambales that Subic is one of the crown jewels of our infrastructure development program for Central Luzon. As a matter of fact, willingly, Your Honor, thank you very much for my good friend and uh, fellow Red Cross. By the way, as the Red Cross uh, delegates are here, I just want to know, uh, you to all to know that uh, we have three, or rather four, officials of the Red Cross here. Senator Mick Sibiri is the Vice Chairman of the Philippine Red Cross. Senator Gachalian is a board member of the Red Cross. And they all do as part, and of course, Senator uh, Cynthia, 